Done is better than perfect. Done is better than perfect. Some of you out there know, you know you do this. You know you either procrastinate or you're a perfectionist. And so you have a problem getting things done because you want them to be perfect. The procrastinator saying, this isn't going to be perfect. This is issues. I got deadlines. Da, da, da. I, I, I've got to really make sure this is perfect. So I, I don't have the, I, I'm too distracted today. I'm not feeling well today. I'm going to go eat that donut, that popcorn, whatever it may be. I'm going to watch the Netflix. And tomorrow when I'm in a better mood, I'm going to make sure that it's perfect. That's the procrastinator. The perfectionist is like, I've tweaked this PowerPoint presentation 72 times. In slide six and slide nine, the font is just that slight gray color is just a little bit off. I need to really, really work on that. Tomorrow, I'm going to work on that part. Or maybe I'm going to stay up late tonight and make sure that part gets done. Then the next day, you have the presentation. You're burnt out because you stayed up all night, and no one's even paying attention to the slides hardly. I, I, I found something really easy to do. I'm going to give you just a quick tidbit. Make really simple, really nice slides and then use those all the time. Have like two or three variations from that slide, but make that like your brand. If you're in a company, use the company's logo. Ha have a graphic designer, make really nice ones, but simple ones. And like I said, three, two, three, four slides at the most. This design, very simple logo, very clean. And then every time you have a presentation, you use those. Don't change it up. Don't change the font. Don't change the colors. Because people like, when you go into the presentation, they're going to associate that branding with you. And if the presentation's done well and you have good conversations, you're asking questions because the presentation should facilitate team learning and questions. You're not telling people what to do. You're asking questions and allowing the team to come up with the answers together. They're going to they're gonna associate that branding that color and that PowerPoint, is it's time to engage. It's time to, he's going to ask us questions and it's time for us to be able to respond. And over time, after you do five or six of these presentations with the same branding, people are just going to automatically start talking and opening up. It's really beautiful. It's just one little trick. But I'm telling you, done is better than perfect. You have so many tasks and so many things to do and so many priorities if you think that 100% is your goal, you're, you're going to be stressed out. Some of you are stressed out because you're trying to do things at 90%, 100%. What if it was done at 70 or 80? I will take something done at 80% and somebody else did it, and it's not exactly the way I did it, but it got done and it's at 80%. Because I'm ready to move on to the next thing. Screw that. I'm, I'm over that. Let's, let, let's keep moving. I chase momentum. I want momentum. I want big waves. I want to surf that energy that's created through momentum. I want my team continually being motivated and just continually riding those waves of momentum. Because when they ride those waves, it becomes easy and fun. And that's what I want. When you stop and try to do perfection, you literally are like a big train putting the brakes on that. You know how hard it is to start a big train back up, how much momentum it takes? So a lot of times you may not even realize it, but your perfectionism, you as a leader, you trying to be too perfect is destroying not only your team, but it's destroying the momentum of those that are around you. And what it's going to do, it's going to stress out those, like maybe it's stressing out your sales department or your marketing department because your finance department will love it, of course. But I'm telling you, you have very creative people and they're not going to handle they can't handle perfectionism. That's not, when you're creative, you want to have the freedom to be able to do things and, and, and have them out of the box. And being a perfectionist, a lot of time is when you're a perfectionist, it's pretty much your way because it has to be perfect. And whose opinion on what perfect is? Think about that. It's your opinion. So they're going to learn your opinion and they're going to do it exactly the way that you want it so that you say, oh, awesome, it's perfect, let's, let's, let's use that. There was no creativity done. You created robots that did it exactly the way that you wanted it. 
You will never have out of the box thinking. And you know, if you if you want to see how dangerous this is, you can see this anywhere where there's creativity, whether it's music, whether it's art, whether it's filming. The creativity will just if you're not creative, that's going to destroy. It. If Disney is not creative with the Marvel movies, if they're not creative with Pixar and and these cartoon movies and everything else, it just goes. A movie that's not creative, it's bland. You could have perfect animation. But if the storyline is not creative, if the storyline is not moving all around and drawing us into, you know, the hero and the villain, that hero's journey, if it's not doing that, then it's not interesting. And you have to build on those moments, the momentum of each of those moments to create a beautiful storyline. And it's the same way. When something gets done, it builds momentum. When you can celebrate with your team that this project is done, this KPI has been met, and you should, don't don't discount, ne never discount walking around and telling people amazing job. Even if you don't think it's perfect, but it got done. I mean, if it's, if it's horrible, that's a different thing. But what's your meter on that? Is it based off of what your biases and beliefs are? Because who made those up? You did. What if the client, what, what if this, let's use your sales department. What if the sales guy knows this guy and he loves fly fishing. So he makes this whole thing with like little fishes on it. Or, and you're like, this is horrific. This doesn't have anything to do. And the client says, you know what? That's amazing. I love it. Thanks for thinking of me. That's really cool. You may have hated it. I, I, I had a meeting the other day where I was talking about website conversion. And I asked them, B2B leads, business to business leads are very expensive online. You know, and you got to run a lot of ads and to landing pages and make sure they convert. And, you know, certain businesses, you could pay four, or $600 for a lead. By the time you, you know, you get an email and a name and a, you know, what corporation they live in, because people don't like to give that stuff out, rightfully so. And I said, what if your website was converting at such a high level, but you hated the way that it was designed and you didn't like the copyright? but it was converting amazingly. I said, you would leave it alone, wouldn't you? If it was bringing in two or three $400 leads a day, you, you would not touch it. You would just leave it alone. Why? Because you saw that the ROI is greater than your opinion. Well, you need to start thinking about that for everything because what happens is a lot of times when a leader is, is displaying perfection, the underlying toxic principle it's a toxic principle that's out there i'm using the word principle or rule whatever you want to call it is that you don't trust those that you work with so you got to you got to make sure they do it your way because you don't trust them enough to allow them to fail sometimes they're going to fail or to allow them to be able to be out of the box and creative and and make something and, and, you know, Bob Iger, the CEO of Disney, he talked about this whenever he looks at movies and stuff like that. He's the CEO. The directors, of course, are going to listen to him. He's the one that basically signed in their paycheck for these $175, $250, $250 million movies. He said something very important. He says, I may not like it. I may not think it's ultimately great. I may give my opinion on two or three things, but I'm going to always make sure that I have trust in that director that he knows what's best. And I may critique a few things, but I'm just the CEO. These people are the creative people. I paid $200 million for these people to be creative and to create something amazing. And, and him understanding that is him being self-aware enough that even though he's a badass CEO, that's, he doesn't know everything. And it doesn't have to be perfect according to what he thinks it should be. Because all that matters is the market audience, right? The kids, if they love the cartoon, they love the movie, and do the parents love it? If the kids and the parents love it, it's a hit. Because now you've got Mattel and Hasbro and Disney and everybody else. They're making rides off of it. They're making toys. I mean, the list goes on and on, right? They can make spinoff shows, spinoff movies. So the risk of you being perfect and it not turning out good to allowing and trusting those that you work with to be creative 
and direct that movie and that movie becomes a hit, if it didn't become a hit because of how you stifled them, imagine the hundreds of millions of dollars that could be lost. And you need to look at it that way. And if, the, if you have people around you and your team that you don't trust, two things you need to do. One, you either need to fire them or two, you need to check yourself and make sure you're doing proper coaching. Because there's nothing worse than having a team that you can't trust. That's why, you know, when I was in the Marine Corps, I trusted everybody around me. 100% with my life. That's what we're doing. We're going to war. You have to trust them with your life. Bullets are flying around. It's so important, guys, that you understand where your perfectionism is coming from. And when you become self-aware enough to be able to deal with that, you and you take responsibility for that, then the blame game of everybody else, this blame game of even in your personal relationships where your wife or your partner or whoever says, I, I, this person's so anal retentive. I mean, they just make sure everything's perfect. The coat hangers are perfect. You may want to live that way, and that's fine. But if you ask your spouse, does it stress them out? Have you had a conversation with those that you're in a relationship with? around you are, are you being are you throwing your biases and beliefs and your perfectionism onto them and judging them because they're not who made you god see how damaging and toxic this can be and this is what i'm saying done is better than perfect i will take done 70 percent some the client really happy my team really happy think it's amazing, I think it's at 70%, I'll take that all day long because my 70 cent doesn't mean anything. If the client loved it and my team loved it and it created momentum and it created unity and people were happy and they were high-fiving each other about it and it got done, who am I to judge that? So I encourage you guys, take 100% responsibility, look inside, see why you're a perfectionist, and fix those things. Thank you for joining us on the Albuquerque Business Podcast. And thanks to our sponsor, RigbyDigital.com. Make sure to subscribe and share. And go to ABQPodcast.com. Get show notes, resources, and links to everything we talked about today to help you navigate your journey as an entrepreneur and business owner.